No one, no one knows. No one, no one knows. We all woke up in the upside down, turning inside out like we've all been led astray. We've been standing on the outside and trying to find our friends like we're all just cast away. Feel like we've been missing out. Well, hello everyone and welcome back to another Harry Potter intensive video with myself, Alexia, with Ricky, Le Ricky Leaks, excuse me, and Jenny Moonstone from our last video you may have seen. We've done, it was two parts on my channel. These ladies have uploaded the videos to their perspective channels. So if you want to check them out, please do. We're trying to share the love and discuss the deep esoteric truths that we're finding in these movies and I would say more so the literature too that affected us as we've now grown into adulthood and we want to equip you all and the future lovers of Harry Potter with these particular I would say influences that we've noticed were more important than maybe were played into when or we understood as children so these videos are super fun I've been having the best time Thank you again, ladies, for doing this with me. And let's get into the books three and four, correct, in this video? Yes. We're going to do our best. So take it away. Take it away, Ern. Take, take it, it away, Ern. Put Leaky Cauldron. That's in London. <laughs> <laughs> that's in London. Um, that's, the third one is my probably favorite movie, but I don't know if anyone's ever known this. If you fall asleep... Like if you're watching Harry Potter and like you fall asleep, the DVD menu for the third one was so annoying because it's <laughs> the small head and he's he's just saying, take it away, Ern, like the entire time on repeat. I hated falling asleep to the third one, which is like something I would normally do. So it was hilarious. So I lead us in with the right line. That was that is the line, the killer line of uh book three or movie three and it's funny too the jamaican energy was been coming in a lot for me too so that was i don't know i think we should also see if we can take jamaica for some reason so jamaica is going to be a lot more of the rastafarian and um even santeria magic which i don't really talk interesting about too too much but i do and there's a lot of stuff there um it's a little bit of like rastacrucian stuff but it has its own oh. little way of doing it um something i always tell people and no like it's really interesting magic i think i've mentioned it on a couple of my magic talks in the past and it's voodoo uh, i'll talk about that really quick since you brought up jamaican and magic I had in the to. caribbean not jamaica but in the caribbean we have haiti haiti is the only fourth world country in the world and um it was kind of, I have a cat right in front of me. So if you see Da Vinci, he's right here. Uh, the Haitian expert. The Haitian expert, yes. Uh, he, no one really understands what voodoo is. Whenever Americans think of voodoo, we actually think of like Louisiana hoodoo, which is inspired by voodoo, but it's not. It's much darker and they do... Uh, practice a lot of things that are very heavily karmically done so mm -hmm. for example real voodoo from haiti people of haiti would never use these dolls that the spanish the, the spaniards brought over and these dolls would represent a person and if you hurt the person these spanish dolls it would happen in real life but voodoo the voodoo practitioners they're like oh my gosh that's so much karma you're gonna like if you do hurt onto others you will receive that hurt tenfold back really quickly like we would never use those dolls but now everyone thinks they're called voodoo dolls and they're not they are spanish made dolls so um Ooh. there's a lot of things that people just don't know about voodoo and there's a really big reason why and how I got started on that magical dig was on American Horror Story Coven. The the, the Covens. They <laughs> explain all the different witches of Hollywood. And they're kind of mean to the voodoo witch. Like they kill her off really quick. They're kind of mean to her the whole time. Um <laughs> and I was Sorry. like, why are all these like Hollywood witches? being mean to the voodoo person. And I looked it up and I found this real voodoo practitioner in Haiti explaining 
how like what voodoo is and basically it's really cool basically <laughs> all the african people forget that black africans sold black africans so how this slavery movement and we're talking about the royals we're talking about the class the wars. caribbean and the class system you mm. basically had these really really wealthy African families selling their subjects to all over the world and they would be taken to like the Caribbean. And that was one place where you taught and you, you taught people how to be slaves. You took all of their life essence. And Jenny and I did a video on um, Adam's family and boarding schools right. and how she described the boarding schools, ripping you of your natural magic, w ripping you of your will to live, making you a good little subservient citizen, whatever, yeah. a, a slave, yeah. basically. Right. That's what they did in Haiti. They, they prepped the humans to become slaves. And all oh, these God. African mothers, these African queens knew about it. These high priestesses of these villages in Africa knew this was happening. So they all did this massive spell mm -hmm. to protect yeah. Haiti. And they said it is going to take hundreds of years. But each and every child that is sold, that is raped, that is killed, that is eaten by vampires will be a drop of the bucket in this huge karmic boomerang and it's going to take hundreds of years but one day this bank of Haitian enslavement and everything bad that's been done to Haiti is going to snap and it is going to be so big it will bring down every corruption in the whole entire world. So fast forward to 2016, we hear about WikiLeaks and it all surrounds buying and selling people from Haiti. Mm -hmm. um, I woke up because I was working with a 501c3 who was dealing with all of these richest funds. And of course it was the campaign year. So of course, uh, John McCain and Hillary Clinton's campaigns were like our biggest things. And both of them had money going to and from Haiti to sponsor kids. So literally that spell that was done hundreds of years ago by these African queens to protect Haiti, it I can tell that it worked because it was Haiti that woke up so many people to, mm -hmm. hey, there's a slave trade going on it does go back to pirate times it does involve the royal family it does involve these rich families in africa wow. and um it's interesting so people don't understand magic and if you knew what voodoo was you would know that it's very real it's not bad for the good guys but it's bad for the bad guys and yeah very cool i'm glad you brought that up because i felt very much that that particular information was needed for me and in this video. And they've been feeling that magic around me and I wasn't sure how to properly address it as I'm, I'm not as familiar. I haven't been to Haiti or I haven't been to anywhere in Africa either actually for, and meeting any of these women in person. But if I had, I'm sure it would be, I would be getting some of that similar information off them. Like, okay, you're yeah. protecting something. They're protecting something. And I definitely believe Wakanda is real, which is just a hidden society. And what are we talking about with take me to Diagon Alley? That's in London. What you just said. It's a hidden society amongst our own society. It's very much a Wakanda-esque, Avalon-esque society. In um, And I live in Southwest Florida now, so there's a lot less... Uh, a lot lower Haitian population. But when I lived in South Florida, there is a major Haitian population and a lot, like everywhere you go, you'll like, a, there's a corner store that is run by a Haitian family. And it's all of these, like, you know, you can get salts, you can get all of your herbs, you can get all of your, anything that you need for any kind of magic. And wow. um, yeah. And it's, it's really actually interesting because it's, it's like not, you can you can really see the difference between a kind of Americanized take on voodoo and and how it's sort of been commercialized and mm -hmm. you know made to be something else other than what it is. Do you guys remember um, 
Miss Cleo, the tarot reader, Miss Cleo. No. Yes. So she she was a real Obia woman. So the, the magic, I used to live in Jamaica I, I, when I was really, really little. Yeah. My yeah. dad worked there. And their magic is called Obia. And she was a real Obia woman, Miss Cleo was. But she came under the management of two Jewish men that saw her, wow. uh, they saw her work as a really like clever marketing scheme. And so ultimately they marketed her, they took all of her money and she died broke and alone with like this terrible, um, you know, her whole commercialized thing when like, that's not even what she was. Like they just took control of her energy and they made a lot of money off of her. But Miss Cleo was a legitimate Obia woman. She was a true to the core diviner. And so again, it's just like this really awful yet like perfect example of what happens when, you know, certain people take control of the narrative and they're able to commercialize it and make something like wildly different other than what it is. But in, we have a lot, we have like a huge um, Haitian population in South Florida. So we see this sort of thing all the time. Like it became a very customary thing to like talk to someone and, you know, a girl, like a woman around my age would be like, I have this ex who's really giving me a hard time. And like the conversation will very easily go from, you know, he's, he's harassing me. He's stalking me to let's put his ass in a jar. Let's put some cayenne pepper and some, some rusty nails and some broken glass and put him in your freezer. You know what I mean? So like, <laughs> it's just, it's a common thing in South Florida, even the white women, you know, even the, the Europeans are it's like, cultural now. It's called, you know, it, everybody's doing it. It's like the cool thing to do it. But it, you're absolutely right. Like there is a karmic, there is a karmic, huge karmic force to it. And, and most of the time, like 75% of the time, those hexes, those spells don't work. Because you're, they're not really deriving their will and, and that power from like a, a true place. The emotion, and the emotion isn't that strong. And that's what and um, in the books for people who haven't who've only seen the movies and maybe not the books, the books of Harry Potter, which I totally understand <laughs> can't be in the movies like it would take too long, which is why they would have to make a series. Mm -hmm. But in the third Harry Potter book, you learn with Harry you're in Harry's eyes but he's learning the Patronus charm for like a huge majority of it like you're wow. reading how to do it and then I grew up and we talked about this in the in Jenny and my and uh, Master Jeff's exorcism video right. and we explain like how to do the Patronus charm is exactly how you do our exorcisms which get rid of these demon life force sucking D demons basically the dementia. So you have to get into a state of bliss yes cacao not chocolate but cacao sacred cacao ceremonial cacao helps you achieve this mm -hmm. if you are scared yes having cacao literally does it's nootropics it's good it has minerals all the stuff so um we see this with meeting yeah, yeah. The very first time we see these masked, cloaked oh, demons, whatever. Um, right. Yeah. He performs a Patronus and he realizes, yeah, you have to have cacao afterwards. And, oh my gosh. So I did a speaking engagement in California. It was my first ever speaking engagement. I had a bunch of people show up. Um, it was like at a park and like other people were just coming and seeing us talk about anti-injectables. And... Um, <laughs> afterwards like i i explained ivermectin people this is how magic works this is how the dark lords work they release something and then they give you the antidote that's how bill gates works so everyone was like oh no covid is curable with antiparasitics now yes many herbs work just fine but so do like ivermectin so people were tricked by going to the hospital when they were sick and they overcorrected and went over to ivermectin. And I'm like, yo, ivermectin's like, it doesn't do exactly what you guys think it does, but because they all heard about it, they try really hard to fight you on it. And I'm like, look at ivermectin was sponsored by Bill Gates. Okay. This explanation is not throwing shade necessarily at Joe Rogan, but it's important to understand 
he is the top podcast. He is not censored. He is doing very, very well. Now, what I call the type of truth tellers like Joe Rogan, and it has nothing to do with if he's good or not, it's, are his advertisers good? It's, is he being told to push certain things and not other things? And most importantly, with people like Joe Rogan, Alex Jones, David Wilcock, um, Jordan Peterson, all these people of the awakening, they share 90% truths, okay? This is what makes them dangerous. And when you go to tell people, hey, look, he's leading you astray, the people are like, oh my God, how could you say that? This, this, and this he said are true. And it's like, mm, but he misleads. So yes, Joe Rogan um, has given us a lot of truth. And I'm really not talking about this for his aspect. But he did make ivermectin famous. Okay. So this is a perfect example of a 90% truth. Okay. Because ivermectin, it kills parasites. Well, <laughs> it treats parasites. And this is a 90% truth. It's like, okay, we're dealing with parasites of the blood. Okay, let's get your things. But it's what he's telling you to use to kill it. Again, this might not be Joe Rogan's fault. I'm not ex expecting him to know chlorine dioxide, hydrogen peroxide, charcoal, wormwood, all these different herbs that kill the exact same parasites that you can grow in your garden for free. But why I explain this is he is not censored information. And you have a bunch of people who eat up vampires version of quote unquote censored information, which is not censored. It's actually paid for and it's very well documented to be famous because the vampires want you to think it's famous. So this was the very, very first committed amount to see what ivermectin can do, okay? When we talk about vampires and stuff, malaria always comes up because that's one of the very first vampiric diseases. And then we see 120 million given shortly after that original um, grant to Oxford for them to look up ivermectin, we see $120 million was given to Merrick and Co. for research on getting um, COVID drugs out there to the world. And then shortly after this, it got famous on Joe Rogan. Merrick Labs. Let's let's see who let's see what Merrick Labs is. Okay, Merrick Labs is the makers of ivermectin. So Bill Gates gives 120 million to the creators of ivermectin right before it gets famous. Um, it's also important to realize who owns Merrick Labs. It's important to know who owns ivermectin so all these people who thought they were being so cool and fighting against the narrative were actually just sipping from bill gates teat you didn't take his bioweapon okay give him ivermectin they'll think they're they think they'll be a part of the secret healing society bullshit now let's look up ivermectin doesn't The recommended treatment for ivermectin is once every 10 years, which is bullshit. It should be like twice a year. But also remember when you do this, it's not going to kill the adult bugs. No, it doesn't. That's why it's a treatment. It doesn't even do its job. So now you might understand why certain things are being pushed more than other things. When we know if you just go to Dr. Clark, uh, Wormwood. It kills the same type of bugs, and Dr. Clark does it in a formula where you take clove and black walnut, and that helps the bugs 
basically be killed at every single stage of life. So you kill all the adults, unlike these made famous things that people think they're being so cool talking about because it was made famous on a very popular podcast. And then that very popular podcast is like, no, it's so censored. Really? Fox talks about it. The most popular podcast in the world talks about it. Bill Gates funded it. BlackRock funded it. So how is it censored? Oh, right. It's not. But if you want to really know what kills bugs, wikileaks.com. We cover the basics from being on Sarge's podcast. We cover cancer. We cover exorcism parasites. We cover all the things in between, how to heal veterans, how to heal from if you have like a toxic spill in your area, diabetes, herpes, teeth. We go over all the things. So definitely check us out. We don't just talk about big pharma things. We do cover a couple things from big pharma we like but, and how we like to use them. But we also talk about things you can grow in your garden, things that are $5 at the store, um, things that are easy to get overseas, all the types of things. So keep going. It's Oxford University, $130 million, two days before it went on Joe Rogan. I know you guys think you're doing something good, but you're actually just falling for the Dark Wizards traps because you overcorrected and you're letting your fear decide your fate. And you're not actually looking at the real money you're not following the actual money and i there's so more to it came up to me trying to tell me all the stuff i already know about ivermectin and he was being a dementor and sucking my energy from me and master jeff came over gave me some chocolate and i cacao felt immediately better but i was drained of energy so i have had that like really happen and they cover it in harry potter so genius i didn't even catch that either I was always like, what's with the chocolate? I mean, I guess, but like, cacao. Yeah. yeah there you go. Um, I love edit, I'll put some pictures of Master Jeff's cacao. I mean, it doesn't look like what it's not like hot chocolate. It's like green, and bubbly, and yeah. it's got a punch when you have it. It's herbs, it's peppermint, it's mm. dense, but it really, really helps. <laughs> Sounds Potion pretty good. Yeah. What did you expect? Pumpkin juice? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So we're going to go straight into our talk, ladies. All right. Yes. Um, I loved Prisoner of Azkaban because it opens with this other character, this aunt coming in and specifically trash talking both of Harry's parents. Like that's the yeah. opening lines is like, he's a, the dad was a drunk and the mom was a bitch. And <laughs> oh my gosh. And she I got her, that, but yeah. 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 I was just watching. And then the, in the fourth movie or the, the goblet of fire, or whatever, the first scene is Nagini, which we talked about before we started. So it was like, I was we're watching those first scenes like, okay, that was so important to me at the time. And we're going to talk about uh, something similar to Nagini really quick. I'm going to open up with it. One moment here. Let's restart this. So, yes. And even Tell me the, if you can hear this, even the prison Azkaban itself. Oh, yeah, I can hear it. Okay. Hold on. Let me restart it. Yes. Okay. Ready. Um, I wondered if Hedwig is actually a maledictus. Unlike other owls, we see Hedwig sharing a close and affectionate bond with Harry. She is often described as a friend and a companion rather than a pet. Harry even named her after a witch he found in his history textbook. Hedwig hates being locked up in a cage. She is often irritated by other owls. And she communicates with Harry in ways that seem far more intelligent than the average bird. When Harry tries to share Petunia's cold soup with her, she, quote, ruffled her feathers and gave him a look of deep disgust. Even when Ron, Fred, and George come to rescue Harry in the flying car, Hedwig, quote, seemed to have realized how important this was and kept still and silent. What if Hedwig was actually more than just an owl? We know that Nagini was once a woman, cursed to slowly change into a snake permanently. Both Hedwig's and Nagini's behaviors are strangely human. Was Hedwig, too, once a human, forced to change into an owl forever and destined to aid the Chosen One in his quest against the Dark Lord? She certainly did something that sets her apart from other animals. She ignored her natural instinct of survival and sacrificed herself to protect Harry in the Battle of the Seven Potters. Have you ever wondered okay. if Hedwig is actually a maledictus? Unlike I other owls. That scene. I have to stop when that scene comes around. She I sacrifices know. herself. I'm just like, you got me fucked up. I gotta go. <laughs> I can't. I can't do it. 
Apparently it's Snow Owl Day too. Oh, I don't want to. Uh, hold on. I'm trying to shut him up so you can talk. Okay, what was that? <laughs> I was going to say, apparently it's Snow Owl Day today as well, December 22nd that we're filming this. So. Oh, how sweet. Uh, that's what I saw. Snow oh. Owl Day. So it's shout out to her. <laughs> it's her day. It's Hedwig's Day. Yes, Jenny, I cannot see that scene. And I know in pre-recording, we were talking crap about Dobby and everyone's like, oh, Dobby dies. But no, Hedwig dying. Oh, what a what a difference! I hate Dobby. He should have died sooner. <laughs> he yeah. he goes out with a bang, and he does help them. Like he, he literally saves them. <laughs> he's, he's so inconsiderate. Like he, you know what I mean? Like just his, his means of of delivery and his whole approach. He's just like this t nasty, wicked little yeah chaotic neutral i don't know exactly what it is i would have punted him into the next the way i see it is like okay you were raised and enslaved by the malfoys like if you're shitty that explains it for me yeah, you know you're right, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> like you're pretty good considering you're from the malfoys right right Okay, I'm going to say this every time. We're not endorsing idol worship. And why I don't like idol worship is because if you put these people on a pedestal or things or beings or fictional or real or whatever, you automatically tell yourself like you can't do it. That's why I don't like idol worship. Um, and that's also how every religion and cult is usually made is when you start to worship the things and not just receive the information and treat the information and the people giving the information as equals. And like on Facebook, if you just comment on someone once, you're like, oh, you got a top fan va badge. And like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm not your fan, sweetie. I'm your freaking equal. But I was top, I was top fan for Ricky Gervais. And then I made fun of him doing um, tennis and he took me off as his top fan on Facebook. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Good. So <laughs> do that again. I'm your equal. I'm not your fan, bitch. Anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> So yeah, don't idle us. Don't idle the people we're talking about. And definitely put on your protections when we're talking about this stuff. Um, I swear, I gain weight whenever I do these deep, deep digs. So every oh. year for the past three years, um, you can see it gradually too. If I'm skinny all summer and all spring and I'm doing my cleansing and then August comes around and I start doing my occult videos and i literally and people don't realize like when you go to websites everyone can do like a to z quotes if you go to a to z quotes that's where most people get their quotes and you share it on facebook and you're trying to you know get a cute little message across or whatever and you share a quote from az quotes well at the bottom of it um in the terms and conditions it literally says we have two white witches and two black wizards or dark wizards and white wizards that work for us. So if you share our content without our permission, we you're giving the right up to hex you. So when you're doing all this, um, how rude! I know <laughs> this is open source information. I have a copy and paste that I'm going to circumvent your nasty little not even there. Yeah, not even there. Don't like share a picture. And I remember me and my husband did a huge video on this. I don't know if they changed it because we made such a big stink like <laughs> on air. But Maybe. yeah, it said that. So you have people aren't reading the terms and conditions and even more so in that they show this on the Matrix and we did a Matrix episode. But when you enter in a site, they say, do you want a cookie? And it's usually so big that you can't like see the screen without accepting cookies. So try to not accept cookies as much as you can. But when you're accepting the cookie to get the information, you're also kind of putting yourself under these like little hexes. So that's why I'm telling people like the information itself might not be bad, but whoever's sharing the conduit that is sharing the information many times is hexed. And most people don't realize it and they just accept the cookie or they just share the information without like reading the terms and conditions. And that is how modern magic and hexes and curses is being utilized on people. Yeah. Um. So yeah, protect yourself. I love the whole armor of God. We're going to put it on girls. So 
Oh, Heavenly Father, I ask for the whole armor of God to be placed on me, myself, everyone watching this, and Jenny and Alexis. We ask for the whole armor of God with the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, God's gospel, shield of faith, and give us the sword of the spirit. And of course, if you have any of your sage, rosemary, black tourmaline, amethyst, clear quartz, cedar, you can definitely utilize those as well. And I always tell people, clean up your house. This will definitely protect you more than you think. Or a silver dagger will do it too. This is yes. for sure. Oh my God. I got a crucifix <laughs> yesterday. A wow. big silver one? <laughs> no, it's wooden. Oh. I, would. Wow. I would love a full crystal or a full silver one. That would be sweet. But when I started doing this, my dad brought over a silver cross crucifix. And I was, he was like, here you go. You're going to need this. I'm like, oh, you know what's up. <laughs> so, okay. We are going to go over a lot of the stuff we covered in the first book because that's how in-depth this is. And I don't think people really realize. So Hogwarts has four houses. Each house is has a element tied to it and a state of matter. So it's interesting because Hogwarts was made a thousand years ago um, by the four founders. Each founders kind of had their own um, house created after them with different traits. But why it's interesting is because in real life, where you and me live, in the between the like late 1800s to 19. 20 basically that time frame when so much changed in our world because we had the invention of the railway cars we had bankers we had the depression we had the sinking of the titanic which is where all the true rich people of america died and then this new money came in and it was very very weird time frame but during that time frame in real life we um discovered there is actually a fifth element um and if you look it up on various magical sites, you always see people bringing in the pentagram and people who are scared of magic and don't know anything see the pentagram and they're like, oh my God, that's evil. It's the devil worship. But ironically, it's to keep away the devil. You're bringing in all five elements. And nice. when you have all five elements with you, um, you cannot be attacked, basically. Um, so, so different magic modalities call the substance that I'm referring to as plasma. I know that like the Chinese pentagram, if you look it up and I know Alexis just did a feng shui. I'm not, I haven't seen your series. I'm sorry, but I don't know if you covered that there Very is basic. a Chinese pentagram and yeah. based on where your house is, you have to follow the pentagram. Like should the water in the bathrooms be over here? Should the yeah. fire and kitchen be over here? And it kind of works in this template. Right. So um, they call it metal. Other people call it the Holy spirit. Other people call it spirit itself. I think the movie fifth element is referring that the fifth element is spirit. So I traversely say spirit and plasma but we're going to call it plasma for the sake of this talk and it has to be talked about before we talk about the huge time traveling aspect of harry potter uh, especially the third one so really quick yeah uh plasma plasma technology we use it for things nowadays uh, a lot of people know of cern a lot of people know of nuclear energy and how many of us receive our power in the power grids and these me mega cities are utilizing nuclear energy um and nuclear energy utilizes plasma and we really had to let everyone know this with world war ii um mm. because that's when science wanted to use a plasma bomb <laughs> and that's where we learned about nuclear energy and warfare and um what can happen when you heat things up really quickly. So Harry Potter, just a Reddit article, people are asking, what is the magic made of? And everyone's like, it's, it looks like plasma. It's, it looks like plasma energy. So that's something to keep in mind as we're going throughout this. And plasma is interesting because it makes up 99% of the known universe, mm -hmm. but you probably like the normal person. Um, if you're trying to explain like, what is plasma? We're like, okay, well, lightning. Technically, like lightning is going to be one of the biggest forms. Aurora Borealis is another form of visible plasma. And then, of course, your blood. 
And uh, when we're talking about vampires and all this goes back to Blood. vampires are real. <laughs> like, <laughs> if you know any of my research, watch the Journey to Truth episodes, watch in real life that they would rather announce that those teeny tiny aliens, they literally told people aliens exist to get around the fact of sharing <laughs> Epstein's client list. But pe normies don't realize once they share Epstein's client list, they're confirming that vampires are real. We all know this. We all know adrenochrome, but normies <laughs> don't know that. So the government quite literally in real life said, okay, aliens are real rather than, you know, telling the bigger um, enemy. And if we listen to the, I always say this too. If we listen to the vampire stories, Abraham Lincoln, vampire hunter, twilight, um, Right. Blade, all these different things. Technically, there are vampires. I wouldn't necessarily call them good. Some are good and some are just wanting to live with humans and they don't need slaves to drink blood from. And when America was made, it was a free nation. So humans were like, oh, yeah, I can go live for free. But guess what? Vampires also said, oh, hey, I can go live for free and get out of these crypts in, in Europe. So you had people of all different types, species coming to America. And this is um, literally the plot of every Civil War vampire movie because it's real. And if you look up real aspects of real vampires, there are real places in New England, America that say this is a Civil War spot and they mention vampires. In real life, people needed to trade in gold, their silver, and they were paid gold for their silver because the silver was needed. Yeah. Um, so that's why when we talk about plasma, it is in you. This element, this state of matter is in you. Fire is in you. If you look at your heart, water is in you because it makes up the a lot of your body, 60% <laughs> of your body. Um, carbon is in you, which is ground, soil, because of your bones. Carbon is a molecule. So our bodies, which consist of two hands, two legs, a head, it looks like a star because you are a star. You already are a pentagram. Yes. Um, you already have all the states of matter and the state elements inside of you. We are the best pentagram. So it doesn't matter if you believe in pentagrams or not. If you have all your limbs, you already are one. Um, and that's why we tell everyone to drink salt water so you can give yourself the electrolytes needed to make an electrical conduit. You are no help to anyone if you don't have salt water. So my <laughs> master Jeff always tells everyone before you do anything, before you heal yourself, before you whatever, our step zero is to drink salt water and go out in the sun if you can. So that is how plasma is utilized in our bodies. Um, it was made by Sir William Crooks. I hope I'm saying that right. He first identified it as radiant matter um, in the late 1800s. Again, this time frame is really weird because people who know Tesla, who know yeah. of the act of 1871, who know of the big things that were changing in this time frame, um, the, the gilded era, really, then you have to realize like this was all happening at the same time. Real magic was coming to the forefront in the late 1800s. That's where time travel movies always, always go back to is the late 1800s. So in these two Harry Potters, we do have the lovely um, one of the Doctor Who's visiting us as one of yes. the new characters. Um, so and the third one is all about time travel. So if yeah. time travel, the idea is how how could time travel be done? And it's technically it could be possible, but you have to have an object with infinite mass. OK, well, plasma <laughs> is treated as an infinite mass mm -hmm. and plasma comprises 99 percent of our visible universe. It's the night sky. It's the stars. It's in our bodies. It's the ripple of electromagnetic fields going throughout our mother Gaia earth because she has a heartbeat. Um, it is the sun that when the sun is raining on us, you have sun rays on you and there's the solar plasma that comes to us. I was telling Alexis, who is a sun solar um, expert on watching what the sun does. I was like, 
whenever there's a huge solar flare, which there was like a week or two weeks ago, um, like just crazy massive solar storm. I'm like, damn it, we're all going to get sick. And it's not a real sickness. I know for a fact that these light coats are quite literally hitting earth. And I can see it because I work with sick people all the time. And when, when it's like the beginning of school year, Yes, obviously everyone gets sick. Over a month, you'll hear, oh, one of the kids got it, brought it home. A week later, me and dad were sick. And then a week later, we got the other one sick. And now the first one got sick because we reinfected. That's usually how sicknesses are transpired. And when we have these like massive solar flares, it's you don't have that like time between infection rates you have everyone in the house is sick at once and that is not how viruses work so to me if you ask me the sun is cleansing us and this sickness people feel is actually herxheimer reactions of them getting rid of this nasty stuff in them um and yeah it looks like purging it looks like diarrhea throwing up fever because yeah you are getting rid of the stuff that i think the sun healed us from and it is a plasma source yeah um mama, mama, the electronic- i want to interject real quick in harry potter they call yeah. the offspring of two magical parents or at least one magical parent and one non-magical parent they call an offspring of that combination a squib if that person doesn't have the ability to utilize their magic. And I just looked up the definition of squib, like just like what it means. And apparently it's a firework that like hisses and then there's a little explosion. But what's funny to me, it's like, it's like a false positive. So like, and it's just interesting to me, like the idea of what makes, what differentiates a magical person from a muggle in the Harry Potter universe is the their plasma. Because it all comes down to blood. Yeah, the blood. They talk about the, the mud bloods, right? Um, and the, I think that the idea there is that if you are, if that plasma in your field is imbued with magic, you are somehow, it's like a, it's a testament or it's some kind of an indicator that your consciousness is above that of those that are non-magical people or muggles. And then that's where that like kind of racism or whatever you want to call it comes into play is like the idea that the, it comes down to your plasma and your ability to like consciously call yeah. forth that magic within your own plasmic co- like composition. And I always, I always felt like the worst for the non-magical, for the squibs in the Harry Potter world. And it's like, you have, you have a magical set of parents and yet you were born, you're like a false positive. Like how sad, you know what I mean? But it kind of, it does suck. I always felt bad for the, for the squibs, but there was a good squib in Harry Potter that I think Dumbledore put her there, but she was a neighbor. um, Yes. She was always looking out and she found uh, D- Dudley and Harry when they were attacked by the Dementors. Remember, she's like, don't put away your wand, Harry. Yes. So she, um, she's a neighbor who always babysat Harry. And she, if you read the book, she's in there in every book. He always has to go with this old lady who has a bunch of cats and like just crazy stuff. And sure enough, like you said, in the, I, it, when he's de- uh, attacked it by Dementors with Dudley, um, She, you know, don't put away your wand. She knows what's going on. And he's like, oh, my God, you've been watching over me the whole time. And I do think those kind of people are being utilized. And no, not all squibs are bad. The only problem with squibs, like Jenny brought up last time, they're jealous. They are. I'd be mad, too. I'd be like, oh, damn it. (laughs) She's so close. So close. I'm a false positive. And the funny thing, I wonder if those people would have been able to use their power if they had enough positive ionic trace minerals, which is my, like, are they just deficient? Do they have a kidney problem? Do they have an addiction, which is like draining them of this, which I think might be the case. (coughs) And when we're talking Wizard doctor. What? Wizard doctor. They need, they need you. you I know, but most of them, yeah. Most of them have their head too far up their ass need- and they don't yeah. want to actually do what needs to be done with healing. And I mean, we can, a lot of this stuff I will cover later on. And Jenny brought up the talk of like the different races and this racism. And 
It's yeah. hard. I've known this is going to be a topic that we have to talk about, especially when dealing with Harry Potter. Um, yeah. And I have always, always, always set myself aside from the main narrative of popular conspiracy theorists. And right. the main narrative is to hate on Jews. And um, they give a million reasons why. And the way I see it is there are 10 lost tribes of Israel. You do not know who all the Jews are. There are 10 races of human outside of the Jews we do know about. And if you want to talk about vampires, there's a bunch of vampires talking about only one 13th tribe of these Israelites are vampires. So the other 12 of them are normal good people. So I truly believe everyone um, is a child of God, is a child of Israel. We don't know. And it's hard to say this because if you start talking anything that leaves the narrative, you're called anti-Semitic, you're called all these things. And it's like, no, like they're trying to hide something so big that that's why they're pinning everyone on each other. Um, and it's, it's sad. It's, it is sad, but that's where we're at. And we will go more into that talk later on. So I mean, they um, led us up even with the third, the th like I said, the third movie. It starts talking about blood, like spe specifying your bloodline. Harry's bloodline sucks because of his parents, and like specifying that and talking about that openly at dinner, like it is. It's audacious and ridiculous, and I'm glad they pointed out like it is making it more out front, like the bloodline and racial issue that was kind of like this social discourse but it's now it's up in the front and really obnoxious and offensive even in in the wizarding world as a whole other layer of that like <laughs> then the what the muggle is talking about at the dinner table now there's a whole other layer of racial opportunities to discriminate <laughs> you know yeah. i heard jk rowling to like give her testimony as to what she was representing like all of this hatred for the like the really uh, like the racist wizards that hated the muggles and wanted like essentially cleansing of the world of, of non-magical blood. Right. But JK Rowling talked about how it was actually a metaphor at the time for all of this hatred against people that had been infected with the AIDS virus. So it, like, that's what I know. Wow. And then what does that, who does that implicate? Good old, what's his face again? I can't remember the guy who's watching. Fauci, <laughs> that idiot. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Again, we're like, we're, we're talking about, you know, it all kind of comes full circle. But I, that was like unexpected to me because I could have found so many other avenues to take that, like more obvious, like, you know, racism is ancient. We've always had racism amongst human, you know, tribalism, nationalism, you name it, we've always had it. So I wasn't expecting her to utilize like the, the AIDS virus as the basis for that warfare in the books. I was just like, damn, JK. So AIDS, I've hole. done a lot with AIDS because, you know, obviously I do work on vampire stuff and then I do work on healing stuff and then I do research on Caribbean um the, the slavery around C Caribbean and all three of those sectors all go back to AIDS over and over again. Wow. Um, and the reason we have to know what AIDS is, it makes you not be able to heal. So right. no one ever dies of HIV or AIDS. They right. die of pneumonia because they yeah. can't get over a simple little cold. Well, early in 2021, when I was on Twitter, I had a pretty big following and I was doing a lot of research over there. It was like the peak of my Saturn return. So I was just like, I can't do that type of <laughs> stuff, like type of research I used to do at that time. But I really got into, um, I knew chlorine dioxide was healing AIDS. And I also saw early reports of the China made virus um, that was hitting the US and people were like, it's half SARS 2 and it's half HIV. Um, and then a couple of years went by and everyone started getting diabetes and cancer. So look at the cancer and diabetes rates since mm -hmm. uh, to 2020, basically. Mm -hmm. So they were giving everyone AIDS during the last pandemic was the biggest conspiracy. And you people haven't really talked about it since, but ask any one of your friends who has an autoimmune disease and every single one of them will raise their hand. And like so many people have autoimmune diseases right now. And it's 
AIDS, you guys can't heal. So, um, yeah. I really, it's, it's so sad. They are doing this to everyone. So bad. Like that. I forgot about that, that they put AIDS in the vaccine. <laughs> so thank you, Jenny, for bringing that up. It takes away your magic. So it all comes full circle. But, uh, I was working with Africans, in villages in like 2018 2019 and we got them chlorine dioxide and they were like oh my god the person was able to get over a little sickness thank you so much for like letting us know about this and we were helping people get rid of this aids and then of course master jeff says glutathione which is eggs like go crazy if you have the hiv whatever if you just have like four eggs a day you won't even come up on a test that you have aids um wow. because it keeps the glutathione is the uh antioxidant but if you tell people that they go out and buy glutathione no that is there's one <laughs> word that can be used and they have made it the magic the evil magicians have made this word bad but what yeah. this word means is to stop a natural occurrence from happening stop a natural body bodily thing and that is to retard we have retardants for fire because it stops a natural material from being attacked you know catching flame so the same thing happens with humans when you retard a human body it can no longer do what it's naturally supposed to do like heal so so um and this is a really hard topic to talk about because i am amongst a bunch of squibs who have leaky gut and they can't even have a piece of toast. They can't even be in a room with someone with fragrance. Yes, toast. We can go into how the wheat crops are bad. Yes, we can go into fragrances, do all this horrible stuff. But if your body isn't clean enough to get over it quickly, then you are not healed. So that's what makes me different from everyone else in the detox world. And they all think we're the same. No. I don't care about things that like crunchy people care about. Like, oh my God, that's so bad for you. Oh my God, that's so bad for you. I'm like, oh, my body's clean enough that I can have it. And they're like, oh, they look at me with disgust and they're like, they hate that. I oh my <laughs> God. And I'm like, no, you're scared of that stuff. And yet I'm way healthier than you. And yeah, you know what? I do have a little bit extra cushion and that goes into fat. What is fat? Fat is an insulator. Okay. Okay, cool. So an insulator, if you're doing plasma. With yes. Alrighty. We have covered this many times. We are electrical beings in order to use the plasma, which is a electrical conductor or even the copper and metals in our bodies that are electrical conductors. We need positive ionic trace minerals. That is the basis for uh, electrical conduit and then you need to ground the wire so this is all very tradesman like and what works for the trades works for our body as well which is why they infiltrated trades with masonic secrecy so much because not everyone can know this they don't otherwise we'd all be free men so um to ground our bodies hugging trees walking barefoot outside this exchanges um negative ions to pair with toxins and remove them from our body which is grounding our energy we have positive ionic trace minerals in a perfect world we wouldn't need to take any kind of minerals but modern food has lost its nutrients there's different reasons for this maybe because bill gates owns all of our farmland maybe because the soil is really really bad nowadays so scientific american I think it says it's because of our depleted soil and since 1950 our food doesn't have these positive ionic trace nutrients that we need from it anymore and it's really sad so we have to look at how do we <sighs> utilize insulation so when you're an electrical being electricity needs insulation but fat can act as an insulation as well okay so it protects multiple things in our body the same exact way that we have to use insulation on like electrical <laughs> and conductive re reasonings so um, of course I'd rather you have healthy fats in your body tallow milk butters beef fats butter <laughs> butter 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 and um, of course healthy like avocado those are good 
fats. So I don't care if you go a little bit more and I tell people when they're going to detox, if they are on the skinnier side and you don't really wanna lose any weight, to bulk up right before a cleanse. So right now I'm on the heavier side of what they want me to be my BMI scale I think it's at the heaviest of average or like 0.5% at overweight and that's where I like to be right before I cleanse because when I cleanse we are going to pull all these toxins out and those toxins are covered in fat so if you don't have fat there's no way to pull these toxins out of us so you are going to lose weight really quickly I have people who are much more in the overweight obese type categories but after cleanse they drop like 20 30 40 pounds really quickly and those pounds also had a bunch of toxins so they heal faster than people who don't have um, maybe as much fat and the problem with hiv aids autoimmune people is they don't have much fat on their body that doesn't mean they don't have toxins they still have the same 5 10 15 pounds of toxins and parasites and metals in them that shouldn't be there but they don't have any fat to get it out. So I do tell my people, which is a big thing with cancer patients or autoimmune patients or HIV people, they don't have the proper amount of fat in order to do a healthy detox. So I do tell people, if of course, don't go down the junk food aisle, but definitely think about upping your fats, the healthy fats, when you're detoxing. Even if it's just a couple pounds, that goes a long, long way in helping your body pull out these things. And also, we're going to be doing oxidizers. Oxidize, look up what oxygen does to um, muscle. It is going to help build your muscles so much. So yeah, you're losing weight, like fat weight, but you're also building muscle just on an oxidizer cleanse. And of course, we want to have those ionic trace minerals to constantly be, yes, there is slight oxidative damage to our muscle tissue because think of working out. Why do you hurt after you work out? Oh yeah, because you tore muscle because it's building bigger. So yes, to fix the oxidative damage that happens on a microscopic level, have your ionic trace minerals, have your binders like charcoal. These are carbon molecules that you're putting in your body. So um, you will lose the weight really, really quickly and you will heal more if you have a little bit of excess weight to deal with let me see what my bmi is hold on bmi calculator i did it a couple weeks ago i wish i was 25 i can lie about being 25 i'm also 411 but i think i'm like 127 to their 131 roughly okay see i'm like 0.4 overweight and that's where I like to comfortably be right before a cleanse because I promise you, once you start those oxidizers, you do start dropping fat really quickly because you're pulling out all these toxins that are covered in fat. And I bet I'll be, every time I've done an oxidizer cleanse, I'm at the lower side of normal um, after a good like chlorine dioxide or DMSO cleanse, which I know I'm going to do this next month. So um, that's something to keep in mind when you do start your healing journey and also your magical journey. You need to be healed. You need to have enough positive positive ionic trace minerals. You need to have a little bit of insulation to pull out anything negative in you. And then once you get started on the oxidizers for cleaning, like hydrogen peroxide, chlorine dioxide, methylene, excuse me, methylene blue, ozone, oxy powder, all these things, um, they start decalcifying all different parts of your body. So this is why you always hear antiparasitics are really good for arthritis and the reason is it's decalcifying all the the calcification of your joints so when you get to this step two and it's all the oxidizers you're going to be decalcifying yes your joints and everything but also your pineal gland your um DNA is gonna is calcified and you can uncalcify it so you can remember things because DNA is ancestral memories because you are basically a hard drive so this is how different things work in um, detox and it's a slow process and I bet squibs might have been able to get their magical power if they did a detox and like 
got some positive ionic trace minerals in them. I bet squibs was a healable condition personally. Yes. So it's plasma and in, it's insulation. I would rather, and I do, I do talk to my mamas from 35 to 55 who have kids who sure they might be a little bit plump, whatever. I would rather deal with those women any day than a woman who is super skinny because she um, doesn't eat anything. She's scared of everything. And she has leaky gut and she has autoimmune disease and she has allergic to nuts and gluten and this and that. And that's all she can talk about. They don't heal. Why do they not heal? Because parasites live in fat. So mm. guess what? If you need to do a parasite cleanse, you're basically pulling all the fat out and the fat is wrapped around a toxin and you can get rid of the toxins. But all these skinny bitches out there who are scared of everything, you can't get the fat. You can't get the toxins out of them because they have no fat to pull, to slide, to insulate. So I, these people, these moms who maybe 20, 30, 40 pounds overweight, they are healing themselves quicker on yes. like chlorine dioxide than these really skinny girls are. And it's like, you guys don't understand what you're dealing with. And I can tell you're a squib from really far away. And they get all, they get all mad because like in this world, you have to heal yourself first before doing magic. And that is where so many people fall for stuff. Here's how it goes. Oh, I have a heart disease. Oh, drums are good. I should sell drums to the world. Oh, I have diabetes. I've read up a lot of it. I should go into making money on telling everybody, but they didn't heal themselves. So it's like, you know stuff, but you're not practicing it. You heard stuff, but it hasn't worked for you. A true magician. Yeah. I'll have a kosher hot dog. If I'm out at the, at the fair and people look at me going, Oh God, you know what's in that? Do you know what's in soy? And <laughs> kosher hot dogs are beef, by the way. You know but what's I'm in the sorry. air right now? Do you know what's yeah. in the air? Do you know what's in, like, oh, you know there's human genome in that I mean, product? I'm like, there's human genome in rice and in every crop known to man. Look up human genome in crops. It's everywhere. So <laughs> stop putting over your one little thing you're scared of. I hate it. I hate it. I and her husband, whoever this woman is in question, her husband has AIDS because he took the vaccine. Like, I'm sorry, but I cannot, I can't get over this. Like, you guys, no, you've been squirming. I've been watching. Yeah, this. No, because I forgot. And it's like, remember 2020, stop, take the vaccine, stop the spread. One year later, two years later, surprise, you have AIDS. I mean, what? Like, now everyone's dying from all these other diseases. Look at everyone got cancer afterwards. Look at everyone got diabetes. Look at the spike, the rate of all these diseases that are actually killing people. And now this literally, as we're speaking, everyone is dying from pneumonia because you assholes yeah, I'm got dying the from vaccine. Pneumonia. So now you have AIDS and now you're not recovering from a simple little cold. I think I have, I think I have pneumonia. So, I mean, I don't oh. know. You'd probably know, like I've never... I've been sick for two months and uh, I didn't heal from the last time I was sick. Like a, a month ago, I didn't fully heal. And then I got sick again. I told you guys, and you know why I got sick. So now yeah. I'm listening to you guys and it's all kind of coming full circle. And I'm like, I'm sending both of you girls a care package. Um, I just really don't want to go to the post office right now because it's scary, but it's going to have like five oh, yeah. different things. When you get it, I'll call you and I'll walk you through each thing. Okay. But we're going to grab these things and pull it out. All year, I've been working with the thyroid thing because I moved into an old house that the yard had glyphosate and I've been gardening. The yard has free kitties everywhere. My cats were clean because they did so much, but now we're all out in the garden and there's like these cats that, you know, have sprayed or peed in our stuff. So they have toxoplasmosis Gandhi, even though I got rid of it for my household. Now we're re having to do it. So it's a constant thing. Um, yeah. The umbridge disease or toxoplasmosis, the same. It's like yes. Umbridge. Is that why <laughs> she has kitties all over her wall? They're like trapped. <laughs> Every I want I her office so bad, but I want to like save all the kitties. Like I will, I Every will time. have Umbridge's office, but I'm going to be like, I came and I saved all the kitties. <sighs> Every so time we see that scene, my daughter can't help it. She's like those poor kitties. She's like keeping them hostage. They're like captive on her walls. And I'm like, I didn't even think of that, but it's true. She's like, they're stuck. These moving pictures on the wall is just like stuck in this evil witch's office for all we know they could be like people that she turned in like you know how ursula on little mermaid her little people and then keeps them into shrimp 
Yeah. Yep. They're all like, <laughs> poor unfortunate soul. We should have a whole episode on Ursula. She's probably like, she was probably done so dirty by Triton. I have this whole fan theory that like her and Triton used to be a thing back in the day. Legit. Like they were like sweethearts, like at like the Merce high school. And uh, she did him dirty. I mean, he did her dirty. And now she just hexes everybody because she's she's super salty. That's just I mean, that's Poseidon and a sea witch. That could be. OK, so this is interesting because um, apparently Ursula and King Triton were siblings, which would make Ursula the Little Mermaid's aunt. And we're all about the ants either. good, And it's not about good or bad. It's like these which aunts have to give the information to the niece or nephew, aunts or uncles. So this is another form of a witch aunt um, <laughs> going to the prophetic child, basically. And uh, it's just not in a good... I mean, there's so many things around that. And it's these things we're right. dealing with, these, like, I call them small G gods, Poseidon, uh, Zeus, Hades, all of these creatures uh characters they derived from titans and then you have to know the titan lore and then how they went into just being small g gods and all these fights and it's like a never ending long thing but if you look up okay really quickly we're leaving this screen modern day alchemy making gold from atoms at cern the number one alchemy alchemical trick ever is to make lead into gold and they found out how to do it at cern and you they're using the collider to get two pieces of it's a, it's a it's depleted uranium makes a substance very similar to lead. So you get depleted uranium, you put it in the CERN high, uh, particle collider and you have the two particles of lead for better lack of better word and right. they make gold. So you have an endless engineering of gold but you're like how are they getting all of this uranium huh i wonder how do they just get all the uh, oh my gosh uranium one deal what's the uranium <laughs> one crazy. deal oh my goodness okay so <sighs> things will start making sense for normies who are late to what's going on anyway um, okay, so I wanted to show you, we were talking about, oh, oh gosh, I can't even think of what I was going to look up, but um, if I, uh, in post edit, I'll remember and I'll add it. Um, but yeah, we're being fucked with. Uh, <laughs> liquid gold, plasma. Plasma is os often called liquid gold. There's a lot about liquid gold and plasma. I've heard. Um, that baby's blood has this liquid gold plasma. I've heard that oh. a divine source from a quirk has liquid gold. Whatever the case is, it's known about. So really quickly. Oh my God. He says it in every single thing he does. And I don't care if you like Donald Trump or not. We have to just address that. About, yeah, we totally, <laughs> oh totally do. He always says we have the liquid gold and he's not always talking about oil either. He like calls it different stuff. He's like, yeah, we got the new, we have the liquid gold. Don't worry. So I don't know what I do know. Plasma and liquid gold go hand in hand in many different um, ways, but I'm not exactly sure. What do and the then, crunchy granola moms call it? Like, uh, is there another name? <laughs> like, where's the positive of liquid gold? <laughs> I, it might be good. We don't know what it is. Like, yeah. it might like be a the good sun thing. or the plasma yeah. or whatever. But but no, beneath your feet. Mm, didn't love that. And then we have to think, what is oil of the earth? What is this crude oil of the earth? Is Gaia alive? Is oil her blood and we're using it and there's all this free like it's just crazy we don't know what we're dealing with right. so um let me go here uh okay so the electromagnetic 
cool of Earth. It is a visible electro force, which actually everyone talks about the Earth being, oh, my God, it's flat. Oh, my God, it's round. Oh, my God, it's hollow. Oh, my God, we're actually in a spaceship like matrix and this is all a dream and we're on a big um, grid. Oh, my gosh, we're on the back of a turtle. Oh, my gosh. But realistically, technically, we're in a toroidal field. And the cool thing about a toroidal field is it always collapses in on itself. So the North Pole of a toroidal field, you're going through a wormhole, basically. And yeah. there is a lady from like the 1700s called Margaret Cavendish. Good old Marg. A good that old Marg. Sounds so familiar. I know. This bitch is awesome. She <laughs> <laughs> this bitch is awesome. She's very, very cool. Uh, there is a video I would have everyone watch, and it's on YouTube. Um, she wrote a book called The Blazing World, and it's this story about she wanted to do a – hold on. She wanted to – go to the North Pole. And she was a really rich oh, aristocrat. Yes. If you look up the Cavendish line, it really goes into the Cavendish and Spencers might be the rightful British heirs to the throne. And it was taken from them from Queen Mary. So you have this um, gunpowder plot and it's all these people trying to throw over back in like the 15, 1600s with Guy Fox. You have them trying to take the vampires out of parliament and get the rightful heirs back into the throne. Mm -hmm. And remember, I we didn't cover it because I hate the second book, but I should have said got uh Fox, the Phoenix, is what saved Harry and Ron from That's right, Fox. That's Fox a good one. Is the name of the um it's this Phoenix that its flame doesn't die, it just keeps rebirthing and rebirthing. But Guy Fox was from this like Cavendish group of trying to take over. So they were always, yes, they're they're aristocrat, yes, they're very wealthy, but this lady did a trip to the North Pole. And of course, she made a fiction book. It's just fiction, you guys. Right. But when she went to the North Pole, she realized it didn't stop. She actually kind of went into like this inner earth and a different dimension. And there were talking animals. And there were really big, like everything that was small here, like a snail might be giant over there. And she would have been called crazy if she wasn't like a millionaire billionaire at the time. So she is the very first person that Tolkien, CS Lewis, everyone that has ever talked about the multiverse theory goes back to this lady of Cavendish. She's the first person to say there's multiple earths. We're all doing this at the same time. You can access those earths through this toroidal field because it's not a plane of existence you go into this hole and you're in a different dimension and that's if you ask me what earth is that's kind of what's going on and then each human body each human vessel is a stargate yeah it's so a fractal ability to traverse those realities or those you know fractal earths or multiple earths with our own will but you know, we're, we're a populace asleep and drugged and diseased and confused and all of these things. I completely understand mm -hmm. why they would be heavily invested in keeping us attuned as stargates to their version of things because they're like, we want this information for ourselves. We can't just let any anybody have it. But mm -hmm. Not and just any squib. squib. Not just any squib. <laughs> it's reserved exactly but the fractal universe is what tesla was explaining he's like when you understand 369 you'll understand the universe and what he means by that is that we are simply a fractal universe when you look at the smallest i love it in, with a microscope and you look at the smallest um size particle ever it's like a quart i don't know they find a new one every year because yeah guess what? The better the technology gets, every single time we get a new microscope, they can see even smaller. So there is, the limit does not exist. There is no smallest particle. There is no biggest particle. When you look at a microscope, it looks just like if you're looking at a, a, a telescope out into space. So um, that yep. is proof of a fractalized universe. And this is the, this is what they're trying to hide from you. 
is that because humans can create humans, like there is something bigger than us and it's not religion. It's because we know there's stuff that's smaller than us. There has to be. That proves that there's stuff. Alrighty. And another aspect on top of these 90% truthers, it's not just in the truther community. It's the news outlets. They're trying to make this fear bad outcome happen. And if you know anything about either biblical prophecy or even like blue hopey star prophecies all around the world, there's these different prophecies of two outcomes always being able to happen and it's just the devil's influence to allow which outcome to happen so even in the truther community we have a bunch of people 90 99 percent truthers and their one percent off is their hatred and their fear their fear and i don't know if they believe it i don't know if they're getting paid to do it we know people can get paid to do this we know that's how the info war is being ran so Listen to these things and then realize when you hear anything that makes you fearful, like, oh my God, there's an army coming. I can't believe you don't see it. Oh my gosh, none of you guys are doing anything. Honey, parasite cleanses is doing enough. Um, Telling the truth in smoke circles at work is doing enough. Prayers is doing enough. Never make people think that you're not doing enough. That's a really big thing in the Black Pillar movement and... That's why I hate people going, oh, he's Masonic. Bitch, you don't even know what Masonic means. There's at least two different kind here. There's uh, there's rivalries within the Masonic orders. Literally, this is why we go back to the gunpowder plot. It's when all the magic societies were taken over. We're going to see in Harry Potter how the magical society was taken over. Is everyone who went to Hogwarts bad? No. Are the 10 assholes that start a revolution for the Dark Lord bad? And did they happen to go to Hogwarts? Yes. Does that mean they're bad? No. Do stupid muggles that don't know anything better and are living in fear and trying to push for one outcome and seem like they're smart make seem like they're smart make it think it looks bad? Of course. So this is what we're talking about with ninety percent truthers. This one's sinister. I didn't sign an NDA on this, and if I did, I don't care. Um, I got some briefs. So briefs are what I'm wearing right now. Sorry for the visual, but they're also. Uh, Here's what we want you to send us, Paul. Musically, this is what it sounds like. This is what it feels like. Here's some visuals. Here's some audio references. However you got to get your stuff together, send us this. I've gotten those from uh, Fox News. I've gotten those from uh, CSNBC, CNBC. I don't even follow them, so I don't know what they're called. The liberal ones, the conservative ones, the kind of in the middle ones. (laughs) You know what they want me to do for you? make you afraid promise that's what the brief said to me reading between the lines and not even some of them were more direct like hey this should cause a tense feeling this should cause like a feeling of anxiety and uh suspense (sighs) threw those in the trash and deleted that i'm not gonna do that with music Sorry to pull back the curtain, but if you still trust any news outlets, I feel sorry for you. I really do. If this message found you, then it's truly meant for you. These messages come from my guides and they've asked me to share. I don't put any hashtags or captions on these messages, so they go wherever they're meant to go. So if this found you, you may want to stop and take a listen. Regardless of how you're feeling, anchor in gratitude, anchor in unconditional love, anchor in the faith that everything is working out for the highest good and refuse any energies that root in fear, anger, frustration, lack. Because there's two sides trying to manifest two very different futures. One existing in much more light and one much more dense. What you pay attention to right now matters. This is how you make a difference. This is how you choose the future you want. Scarcity isn't real. It just feels.